What's up guys, today I wanna to talk to you about my top five tips for editing as fast as possible inside of Premiere Pro. Tip number one is map all of your keyboard shortcuts to be under your left hand. Anything and everything you find yourself doing frequently, map it to a keyboard shortcut. But not only use the shortcut, make sure it is under your left hand. When you're editing, your right hand almost always needs to stay on the mouse as there are many tasks that are just more efficient when using the mouse. Your left hand should be fully dedicated to shortcut keys. There are at least 15 keys under your left hand that you have access to at all times. When you add in modifiers like command, shift, option, or control, you get an additional 60. There is no reason a shortcut key shouldn't be under your left hand. This allows you to keep both your hands in one spot and not look down at the keyboard to hunt for a key that is on the right half of the keyboard where neither of your hands naturally rest. I would also recommend remapping many of the system default commands to something that suits you better. Many people use J, K, and L for speeding through footage, but to me, this never made much sense because eventually I'll have to move my right hand back to the mouse or my left hand back to the home row of the keyboard after hitting J, K, or L. So I remapped shuttle left to A and shuttle right to S. Now I don't have to lift my hands to do the action. Similarly, many people use in and out points all the time. The default is I and O. So I remapped those to be shift E and shift R. If you wanna edit as fast as possible, I would recommend minimizing how much your right hand and left hand need to move. Your right hand should stay on the mouse and your left hand should stay on the home row position of the keyboard. Tip number two, and this might be my all time favorite is create macros for Premiere Pro. If you're a Mac user, you can use a program called Keyboard Maestro. If you're on Windows, you can use Auto Hotkey. If you don't already know what a macro is, it's the idea that you press one key and it will perform multiple actions. For example, to slow your footage down by 40% in Premiere, you would need to hit the shortcut key to pull up the speed duration panel type 40% and then hit enter to exit the window. Well, I created a macro that when I hit one key on my keyboard, it will do all of those actions for me instantly. This allows you to string together multiple shortcuts in Premiere or even create shortcuts that don't exist. For example, a shortcut that doesn't exist inside of Premiere is the ability to apply presets to your footage. Well, with Keyboard Maestro, I was able to create macros that will automatically apply the presets that I want to my footage. Now, instead of going to effects, clicking the box, searching, then clicking and dragging and dropping it onto my footage, I press one key and I am instantly done. Using macro software allows you to create shortcuts for just about anything you can imagine, and it has been an absolute game changer for me. I have dozens of macros that I use all the time that help me avoid extremely annoying and repetitive tasks. If you want to more than double your editing speed and you've learned most of the basic keyboard shortcuts inside of Premiere Pro, macros are the way to go. Tip number three is to create custom workspaces for all of your common editing tasks. If you do a lot of color correction, audio mixing, or graphics, it only makes sense to have dedicated layouts for each of them. Too often I see people manually rearranging, opening, and changing panels inside of Premiere, when instead they could instantly switch to a saved dedicated workspace with one shortcut. Here's the main workspace that I use for the majority of my edits. It's great for doing most of my assembly, but eventually if I want to do color correction, I'm going to want more dedicated tools for the job. Instead of opening all of these panels one by one, docking them and resizing, I can hit one key and switch to my already built color correction workspace that I designed for how I like to work. The built-in workspaces are great if you're just getting started with Premiere, but for most people, I think there are much more efficient layouts for the way that they like to edit. I would recommend going through and finding what tools you use on a consistent basis and create custom workspaces for them, and then map those to shortcuts so you can instantly switch. This can be a huge time saver and also creates a familiar work environment. Tip number four is to stay organized. Far too often I will open someone's project folder and it is a complete mess. Before even getting into Premiere, their assets aren't in proper folders and many different file types are mixed together, which makes it hard to find a specific file quickly. If a project gets big enough, eventually you will start spending time going, huh, where did I put that file again? If you are organized from the start, it makes managing your projects much easier. Organization is going to be different for everyone, but I will show you how I have my folders set up. First, inside of Finder, here are what my folders look like before 
before I start. I have a template saved that whenever I want to start a project, I can just duplicate this and all of my folders and Premiere project are ready to go without having to remake them. I would highly recommend keeping all of your project files and assets inside of one folder. This makes it easier to move between hard drives and links won't get broken if you had an asset that was on your desktop. Inside of sources, I have audio, footage, and graphics. If we go look inside of footage, you'll see I have it broken down by each camera from that shoot. If you shot for multiple days, you could do each day and then each camera inside of that. Hopping over to audio, you'll see I have music, sound effects, and external audio. External audio is anything like a secondary audio source from my Zoom or a voiceover if the video needed it. This allows me to keep my audio files very clean and organized so I immediately know where any type of audio file is. If I want sound effects, it's in the sound effects folder. If I want music, it's in the music folder, and so on. In my opinion, it's easier when you don't mix all of them together because inside that folder, you know it's only sound effects or only music. Now, when I go into Premiere, you'll notice that I have a very similar layout. At the top, I have sequences, which is where I store all of my timelines and revisions. Below that, we have sources, which has my footage, graphics, and audio bins. My finder structure mimics the one inside of Premiere Pro. This way I always know exactly where to find any of my files if I need it inside of Premiere or in Finder. Tip number five is use Pro.io to automatically import new assets into Premiere. Something that has always annoyed me is that Premiere doesn't have the ability to watch folders inside of your projects and automatically import those assets for you. This means I have to load up the media browser, navigate through a bunch of folders, and then drag it into the appropriate bin inside of Premiere. This gets old really fast. Well, that's where Pro.io comes in. It automatically does all of this for you. It's a plugin for Premiere Pro and After Effects that costs $59.99, but it is absolutely worth every penny. Once you have it installed, click the new Watch Bin button. From here, a browser will pop up asking you to choose which folders Pro.io should watch. Since I keep all of my assets inside of this Sources folder, I will select that. Pro.io now makes a folder in Premiere with the same name as the one you selected. Now, anytime a new assets get put into any of the subfolders in my Sources folder, I can click one button and they all import into the proper bins. If you combine this with tip number four, you can save a template with Pro.io already set up. Now, whenever you open a new project, you can click sync watch bins and all your assets import into the proper places. Absolutely incredible and a huge time saver. Definitely check out Pro.io. It has even more features that I'm not going to be covering in this video, but the auto importing feature alone is a massive benefit. And as a quick little bonus tip, I wanna talk to you about Premiere Pro syncing. Many people buy an external program called Pluralize, and Pluralize is awesome at what it does, but I think a lot of people don't realize that Premiere Pro actually has an amazing syncing feature built in. Where a lot of people get stuck is that they don't realize every audio and video track that you want to sync has to be on its own video layer. If any of them are overlapping, Premiere Pro will not let you sync them. But if you put every single one of them on their own track, you can sync so many without any issues inside of Premiere Pro. You could have 40 audio tracks and 40 video tracks and it would sync just fine. The highest I've ever personally done was 14 audio and 14 video tracks and it synced perfectly. In my opinion, it's even faster than using Pluralize because now I don't have to put it in another program and then import the XML into Premiere. So if you haven't already bought Pluralize and you've been considering buying it, give the syncing feature in Premiere Pro a shot. Just make sure every audio and video source is on its own layer, otherwise it will not work. But I promise you it is very fast and could easily save you $300. So there you guys have it. Those are some of my favorite tips to accelerate Premiere Pro workflow. If you guys are interested in seeing more, I'm building an entire Premiere Pro course about how to edit as fast and efficiently as possible. There will be an entire section dedicated on how to build your own custom Premiere Pro macros, which I am really excited about. If you want more information, you can sign up for my email list down below, which will notify you when I publicly launch the course. Thanks for watching, and if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know what your favorite Premiere Pro tip is. 